some of you are facing audio issue um i can tell you that i am having no issues with my audio video transmission so please do check on your end as well all right wonderful uh, i was told to start at 3 it's 301 let's begin so good afternoon everyone hope you're doing well and staying safe and you're all fed and ready for the next one hour. thank you for joining and uh, my name being gurpreet bhatnagar your resource person for the day a small introduction of who am i where am i from i'm a math enthusiast um, that's what my teachers uh, used to call me and i love this title um, in the teaching profession, having 25 years uh, of experience in education sector, I indulge in uh, authoring and reviewing maths publications, uh, developing K-12 curriculum. Currently, I'm working with CBSE as a resource person, as a master trainer. Um, the recent publication I've had, which I'm very, very proud of, is the ebook on applied maths uh, for class 12th. It's out. I don't know if you have received it. Please let us know whether you like our efforts. Um, I've written uh, and been part of many uh, teacher energizer manuals, literacy pack practice book, the item designs, and teaching manuals. So this is just a small idea of who am I. Um, thank you, uh, COE uh, Chandigarh, for this opportunity. Uh, I love to contribute to capacity building programs and take workshops. Thank you for having me. I hope I do full justice to everybody's expectations. Uh, why don't you just start off by putting some of your expectations from this webinar in the chat box? Meanwhile, I'll get starting. Firstly, first chat box that we all know where it is. There's also an emoji um, connect point drop box there. Uh, through the session, I'll invite and hope that you will send some reactions, some feedback, um, some ideas that you have tried in your classes and here we go. Um, just wishing for an interactive session. Uh, is there anybody who has met me before? Are we seeing each other again? Um, a big shout out if you are a revisitor, but thank you to have you uh, with 190 participates. I'm going to start off. Are you ready? Because I'm going to just start off by showing you some pictures where I need you to share your uh, something according to NEP. OK, I'm making note of everything that you're putting in the chat box. Feel free to keep doing that through the session. So uh, in the next slide, you're going to see one picture. And I want you to just give me your first impression from that picture. Put a slogan to it, put a title to it, put some sentiments, just your reaction point on what you're seeing right now. What would you make of these faces? If you were one of these faces, what would you shout out from that picture? Please just let me know. Good to see you're all ready. I need you to now start chatting. Put a slogan, some catchy lines, if you may. Get creative. If you were one of these girls, if you were one of these students, I'm sorry, all of them are girls, but excited to attend the class. All right. Good afternoon, creativity, okay. Happy learning, happy classroom, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. I have some more pictures for you. Don't stop there. I'm sure you've seen this picture going viral on WhatsApp and Facebook and all the social medias. Put a catchy slogan. Put a catchy slogan to it. Uh, I hope this is not what you're sending as joyful learning. We moved on to another picture, and I hope you noticed the slides are moving. All right, waiting, waiting, waiting. Some response which I can put to this picture. Learning with creativity, with fun. I hope that's for the last picture, but parent at work. Thank you, helping grandson. Look before you leave. Interesting one. Making right angles, that's wonderful. Family support, I love that. Deep learning, anything for the grandson, wonderful. I applaud you all for your humorous and uh, uh, creative ways of looking at things positively because it of this particular slide picture really offended many, many, many teachers and there was a lot of noise around it. How about this? 
How about this one? Put a slogan to this now. I've just highlighted a red box for you. I hope you know what's really going on. Child is not interested in the online class. Put a catchy phrase, a slogan, online classes that says it all. Two words, bored. Catch me if you can, multitasking. I'm liking my, my friends here today. It's really, it's, it's going to be fun. I look forward to, okay, looking forward, not listening to anything, sleeping. I don't know. I don't think the child is really sleeping. He's enjoying watching his cartoons while the teacher, poor teacher must be thinking the child is really, really attentive. Has it happened to you? Has any, is there any teacher who would relate to this? Have you seen anyone around you doing this? Time to enjoy. Great, great. Let's not waste time. There's one more, the last one. I'm sorry about the poor quality of the picture, but can you put some slogan to this? Anything that comes to your mind, we, you know, in the last one and a half year, we all have struggled in our own ways. What comes to your mind when you see pictures like that? Hardworking, inspiring, dedicated, innovative, in the nutshell. Wow. Commitment. Dedication, Jugar, yes, yes, this picture was actually called Chemistry Teachers Jugar. Hanging classes, I like that, Manjuriji, I really like that. Dedication, yes, desperation, would you like to put it there? Person, okay, wonderful. Just needed to check whether you know and how fast you are as a typer in the chat box. So great to have you. Really, really uh, looking forward to next almost one hour. So, chali, ab maths class se thoda sa le lete. I'm sorry, I tend to break into Hindi every now and then. Please let me know if I should just converse in English or if my pace of talking is okay with all of you. Please let me know. So, in the next slide, I'm going to share a challenge. So, the challenge is where is it? Yeah. On the shelf, I'm sure you can see 10 um, hardcover math encyclopedias from left to right. Look at the arrangement very, very carefully. And uh, before I ask you my question, uh, I have to give you the details that each book is of the same dimensions, thickness, height, cover, everything is exactly the same. And in each book, the width of the thickness of the whole book from the cover to cover is five centimeter, whereas the thickness of the cover part is 0 0.25 from either side. You can see it on your screen. Now comes the question. My question to you is, what is the distance between the first page of volume one and the last page of volume 10? It's a very simple question. I look forward to your answers in the chat box. Let's, let's get going again. Fastest fingers first. So, come on, come on, 50 centimeter. Are you sure about that, Shweta ji? Five centimeter, no way. All right, 25, 45, 49.5, 50. Hmm. At least responses are coming, I'm happy. 40 centimeter, 49.5, all right, keep going. 47, read the question again. What's the distance between the first book, first page, last page, volume 10? Please see how the placement of books is done. It's not, it's not, oh wow. I hope some of you are just making typing errors. Okay, all right. So let me not waste your time. The right answer is 40.5, 40.5 centimeter. Look carefully. Let me show you what you were supposed to focus on. You were supposed to look from the first page to the last page. Yes, 40.5 is answer. If you're wondering why, how, you know, you are you only have to look at the first cover of the first book till the cover of the 10th book. And there are eight books in between. So eight books is 40 plus 0 0.5 and 0 .2, 0 0.5 total from both sides. So do the maths, it's 40.5. Is it a strategy? What's my purpose? What's my objective? You know, the idea is not to load you with cognitive load 
because all of you mostly rushed into, thank you so much, Diksha, ma'am. Uh, you rushed into calculations and formulae and some of you just didn't care, but I wanted you to minimize the irrelevant load and optimize the relevant load. That's what I go with. So I try to put questions where we can just simply ask, what's the distance from this point to this point? Or can you do it some other way where the answer is, looking very simple but yet needs complex thinking with that let's move on and yes chat box is a way to let me know how you're feeling with each slide how we're we going because you are going to give me the direction so am i on the right track please say a yes no maybe hopeful in the near future we still have time so aage chalte hain चलिए जी अब इस स्लाइड के ऊपर हम वो करने वाले हैं जो हम सब लोग बहुत ही बहुत ही इजीली कर पाते हैं सॉरी अबाउट दैट आई एम वेरी सॉरी अबाउट दैट जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकंड जीज एंड पेडेगॉजीज दैट वी आर ट्रेन इन आवर प्रोफेशनल लाइफ इन डिग्रीज मोस्ट ऑफ अस फील दैट वी कैन स्लिप इनटू द रोल ऑफ अ टीचर इन अ वेरी प्रेडिक्टेबल फैशन इन अ वेरी पिक्यूलियर ईज यू नो and this is what we do we introduce a topic we go into the class we introduce ourselves we start off the topic after that we go into developing the idea of the concept i'm going to teach after that i give them guided practice through examples i show questions rather than letting them figure it out i try teaching them okay this is the question this is what we are going to do and the right answer to the previous slide was 40.5 cm ma'am okay and then closure we try to give a recap revision and then we give them homeworks that's independent practice that they are given homework worksheets assessments quizzes whatever we do and then the final aim is to evaluate how much understanding has a child made out of it or basically we measure their learning that's it you know this is leading to this not all kids feel this but usually this is what most of us end up doing being an instructional teacher we instruct and not in general i'm not going to pass a sweeping statement but this is in my experience that i have seen and yes as a beginner i also started and from this mode of teaching only but can we move on from there please can we please move on from being an instructivist because through my experiments and failures i know that maths does not need guided instruction all the time it does not need hand holding all the time you don't have to really take them from unknown to known i'm just putting cliched phrases i've heard over years you don't have to really give a child information to go from superficial to deep uh, uh, deeper learning you don't have to be one directional instructor we can do better because i have read a line being used and quoted so many times that learner is a vessel and that to an empty vessel what and what an insult to the learner that these this is a theory that i don't agree with and basically this is the quote i live by you know the mind is not that needs filling but what that needs igniting if you relate with the sentiment if you are that kind of a teacher please shout out in the chat box give me some kind of reaction if you think the child is an empty vessel or you think you just need to ignite the curiosity or the love for learning in the classroom so chat box guys don't stop keep typing let's move on let me remind you again your reactions are going to give the speed or direction to this um, togetherness we have right now now in this particular slide i'm coming with another challenge are you ready are you ready chat box yes no no yes let me know yes thank you i was waiting for that so i'm assuming my friends over here are at least interested in sports if you're familiar with tennis please say yes if you know the kind of game it is it's basically a game which is played between two players or sometimes even played in doubles for the time being let me say we are going to assume that the players are playing single game singles game and we have 64 players now you know how this game works so pairs play and the winner goes into the next round and the winner of each round gets passed on to the new round now my question is 
to win this Wimbledon Cup. Let the animations do their job. How many games are played in total, including the final game? Or why don't I put it differently? Why don't you do the calculation if you want to apply a formula concept, any progression? I don't care. Just get me the answer. So this is an open ended question. Do it whichever way. My question to you is how many games did the winner have to play to win the match? So 64 started. The winners moved on, so that's a 32. Then the winners moved on, that's a 16. I hope you're doing the calculation. How many games were played in total? In all, I'm not saying the winner only. I'm saying in all, how many games were played, including the final match? If, I, if I've made a mistake while saying, let me correct myself again. The answer is not 6. It's not 128. It is not 64. I saw the right answer go up. Yes, Bhushanji, you're absolutely right. 63 is answer. So from 64 to 32 to 16 to 8 to 4 to 2 to 1. And in total, it's also 63. And then I asked this question to some young kids, primary kids. It was it primary or middle school? I'm not very sure. And I said, one of the child, I, I asked them to explain this answer. Is it so if one person is winning, he must, they must have, 63 losses. So in case in total, 63 matches must have been played. It just stumped me because I like to think maths in a very certain and defined way, restricted way. And here is a child who made such a um, curious question into such a simple concept out of 64 players, one person has won. So the players must have played 63 games. So does it make sense to you when kids just come out with their own interpretation or logic beyond the mathematics that we are trying to teach through our restricted plans? You know, so the next time 100 players are playing, we all know 99 games are played in total. Do you get that? Can we have tournament like this for 45 players? No way. So when I put up questions like that, my kids get interested and I'm letting my child think the way they want to think. So what am I doing? Or what does a teacher nowadays, including all of you, what are we really doing? We are giving them new information. We don't really go into explaining. We give them information and try to gauge their interpretation of it. We check the prerequisites. How much do they know what they need to know to do a new topic? After that, we ask them open-ended questions. You search for responses and from there you take the lead into building a concept. So you don't go about, okay, I'm going to teach you this and this. Now open up your books and take this chapter. We are not doing that anymore. So we are asking questions, leading questions and taking them to a particular direction with a learning objective in mind. Inquiry-based challenges. If you are putting that in your classroom, please say yes in the chat box. Are you indulging your students into inquiry-based learning, like case studies, like projects, like projects-based learning, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. The list goes on. But are you getting them to explore rather than dictating what they will know eventually? And then we give them opportunities to research. CTPS, one of my favorite topics. I hope to see you in one of those webinars for CTPS about critical thinking and problem solving. This goes so hand in hand with mathematics. Are you indulging your students into that? A yes is such a thumbs up for you and collaborative classes and cooperative learning. These are not one and the same thing. If you have time or if you have the interest, please read more about this. I have seen teachers use these two terms so loosely and for, you know, um, interchangeably, but though are not concept, these concepts are not same. Please do do research because this is something that we do in the classes. One of the strategies which is so, so on promotional well, because of uh, COVID and pandemic situation and going into online classes. So what is this? This is a construct twist teacher. It's a tongue twister. I don't know why. This is a constructivist teacher, the one who provides and creates continuous and frequent opportunities in the classroom. For what? So that your students construct knowledge out of their experiences through your lessons. You are teaching, 
but the child is inferring and reaching the understanding at his own pace so he takes the an autonomy of learning by listening to you and then through all these strategies you drive him towards a conceptual building so again if it makes sense to you please write something in the chat box am i doing good till now are you with me till now we have been into 20 minutes is it going good for you so take your child from rote learning to inquiry based learning and also from academic achievement to authentic learning contextualize the learning so that he can use it for later time you don't want a child to do quadratic equations and not use it later and sometimes children actually come and say you're teaching me functions but where are functions where am i going to use this later on so when you talk about relatable and relevant experiences when you give them case studies which is a big assertion questions etc etc you are actually being a constructivist you're doing such a great job a high five to all of you so i hope you're with me till now shall we move on i'm gonna bring you some of the philosophies i live by before i actually indulge you in today's session in the true sense i believe that you have to take your children beyond rote learning you have to promote and invite questions and queries. Don't shut them down. Don't have them just answer you. Have them question you. <clears throat> you have to connect the inside and the outside world. You have to bring curiosity because that would indulge them into love for learning. You have to have inquiry-based learning, as I've been saying till now. And you also must also ask them to give clarifications and their observations or why do they say what they are saying check for their logic and ctps as i said earlier and allow a platform a maths culture where we can go beyond a textbook and just sometimes ask them what we learned in the previous three four classes or in the three four chapter where do you think you're going to use it what was your good learning from there what was your struggle from there so having a conversation is so so good because you must build a connection with your students uh, working memory working on the lasting learning has to be relatable then only it happens you need to conceptualize and contextualize your teaching and my favorite learning has to be fun both ways for me as well as for the other party and i'm trying to make it fun i hope i'm doing a decent job of it would definitely appreciate some responses coming in the chat box again the what the session was on the teaching strategies in mathematics secondary level let me make it very very vague and in general what what do you understand from the word strategy as a teacher what does this word shout out to you please write in the chat box as to what your understanding of the word strategy is in the light of teaching the method planning perfect planning all right is there something called perfect planning execution all right methodology methods methods and layout great planning you know our lesson plans are actually the strategy book that's how i see it so by the definition it is a plan of action device to achieve overall objective so we have learning objectives we are looking for learning outcomes we are looking for uh, success criteria etc etc all the fancy words and to reach or walk on that path the work that you do that you plan to do to achieve the goals is a strategy simple we know so many but today i try to bring you some of them why my question to you is, why should I do that? Why do you need to strategize? And that too, teaching? What's the need? Any responses in the chat box? Why do we need to learn new and relevant teaching methodologies, strategies? What's the need for? Need for what? Why? Effective learning, okay. Any more? We have 250 and more. Come on now. Effective teaching so they can learn. They who? 
I hope you're talking about them. Thank you. You know what I just did? I said, I gave a very leading question and the minute somebody replied to what I wanted to hear, I gave my next question or I'm leading you on in a very specific plan. This is actually my strategy and that's what we need to do for the kids to make the learning possible to reach wider audience of multiple intelligence and differentiated learning styles. Because children come with different learning styles, preferences and abilities. Storytelling to introduce a topic gets your oral and social and verbal kids involved. Having students to work on models, on research based projects, manipulatives, maths lab activity gets your tactical, tactical and the spatial students excited, the logical and the analytical kind. They get more enthusiastic about it. Talking about sequences of progressions in nature that gets your natural listener involved. So basically, we need to tailor make teaching. Why? It improves learning outcomes. It increases student engagement. It inspires love for learning. It inspires subject awareness. It helps a student to be efficient and construct deeper understanding. If I'm missing out any important points, why we need to cater to multiple intelligence? Yes, relate the concept with reality. Wonderful. Thank you. Keep it coming. Let me not be the one talking. You can talk too. It's just that you're writing and talking. So please express yourself. So if I'm looking into your strategy and I want to call it great, these are the elements that I'm looking for. I'm not going to do the talking here. Let the words speak for themselves. So I'm going against what I'm saying, but you quiz a child to know what they know already so that you can build on it. You monitor their work to check their understanding of what you're teaching. You give them samples, you give them examples, non-examples, classroom discussions, open forums to check, to reduce their cognitive load. They learn from each other. After that, you check through this scaffolding learning. That's another session I run, so hope to see you there. Look, this is just not me talking. This is basically the components of a great teaching strategy. If most of these components are in your teaching, you're doing a good job. You are a constructivist. Again, tongue twister for me. All these efforts in a planned strategy take your child from this to this. You're giving them visual stimuli, you're giving them verbal stimuli, you're putting synchronous classrooms, you're putting asynchronous classrooms, you're putting hybrid learning, you're putting flipped classroom, you're putting blended learning, you're putting cooperative learning, you're putting collaborative projects. The list goes on. We are re hearing so many fancy words which have come into our terminology. Otherwise, earlier it was synthesis, it was heuristic, it was uh, learning by doing, it was uh, inductive and deductive, it was interactive, exploring. But now we are going into finer versions of strategizing the teaching to gauge and make a holistic experience for the children. So a lot of philosophy because this is what Bloom Taxonomy talks about. In mathematics and on the science subjects, we know that we have to take our kids from the lower order thinking to the high order thinking skills. As the National Education Policy 2020 says, asking a child to asking or expecting or raising the bar for the child to come up to the stage of thoughts. So yes, this is what we are aiming for. From superficial to deeper to simple to complex, isolated to integrated, fancy words. But if you agree or if you have some phrase for it, please let me know. How do you see this taxonomy in your teaching? Please let me know. I would definitely like to know. So how? How do I do that? I do have for some pointers. Again, these are not teaching strategies. This is how you take your classroom management. So it's not a webinar on class management, but this is the very first thing I do. I try to build and invest in creating a relation with my students. Know where the mind and the heart is. Identify the potential, the mindset, the misconceptions, the misbeliefs about the subject or themselves or their 
performance anxieties or performance history because that can tell you so much about his psyche. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, if a child cannot learn the way we teach, we should teach the way they learn. Please let me know if you like this because this is very relatable. Uh, this particular slide shows one of the rubrics I share with my students uh, in the beginning of the session that tells me a lot about their confidence, comfort, and everything regarding the subject and performance. So maybe you could put a questionnaire and try to sense the kind of kids you have in front of you, because if you know better, you do better. That's another quote I love too. So if I know better, I will do better. So get to know your kids. So I put such kind of rubrics in the beginning of the session, after the exams, small rubrics would do at the end of the session before they're leaving me going into the other class so that I know what I did right or who could move on, who has a growth mindset or who's still at the same level. Having your children tap into their maths aptitude. Yes, it's a universal effect, agreed. Einstein had said, I don't know why I'm quoting so much, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. It fits into the role of constructivist teacher. Assess as a taskmaster, raise standards and expectation, check and challenge them on the responses for failure and mistakes. You know, an A plus on a well done assignment is good. Uh, thank you, Diksha ma'am. But a constructivist and pinpointed feedback, timely feedback, impactful feedback, that helps them better. So don't just grade them A plus or something, something. Please write a small note of if you could work on this particular concept, it would be even more beneficial. So another one which I would let the slide speak for itself. Kindly bear with me, stay with me. This is why you're here. This is what you're expecting from me that is there a way we can upgrade, update and upskill? What's your, what's, what's your thought or reaction on this, on this particular thought that every teacher must do this? It's a demand of the day or demand of the time or pandemic. No, it has always been true. And moving on to another one, ICT has to become part of our life because of the generation we are serving, the people, the students we are catering to, they need better than question answer in the register. So your PPTs, your animations and PPTs, whatever little I've been able to do, try to impress you. The educational videos that we hunt continuously, online resources, simulator platforms like FET. If you know FET, P-H-E-T, please let me know if anybody is using FET stimulus, uh, stimulator. That's wonderful for science and maths. Try it, P-H-E-T. Okay, FET, C uh, CK12 Flex books, please note. These are also where a lot of animations have been made very basic, but good one. Um, Canva, anybody using it? Interactive gamification, quizzes, uh, wall word net. I don't know, so many are available. I don't even have the list. It's just not about Kahoot. Oh, yeah, somebody just pointed out Kahoot. So we need to keep exploring. The latest, latest one that I have been uh, working on that I'm trying to get confident on is geneal.ly so try it it's, it's really wonderful so if you could just get your hand on something try to explore it and if you can put it in your lessons why not the fifth point is very very close to my heart because as a student finding a meaning in what i'm doing why am i doing this why am i learning this if you could put some meaning and purpose to it then I'm your student. If you want to really engage your student, you need to tell me why I'm studying the way you're teaching me. Yes, GeoGebra, Desmos. The list goes on. It's up to you how you give that experience to the child. So when a 10th class child is doing coincident lines or intersecting lines with me, why do I need to talk? I'm sure most of us are using GeoGebra and moving the lines around or having them type their own choice of equations, seeing how the, the lines are behaving. Experience. You're having him relate to it. And then we give them open-ended directed questions and pick pointers from the responses. And that's a strategy. You know, 
this is my strategy showing you another challenge it's not a challenge it's just something that i have been uh, asking my students and teachers i meet i'm showing you a pattern of placement of squares i hope you have um, the presentation uh, visible for you case one has four squares case two has so many i'm not even counting if i count you will know what i'm doing so in these three cases i'm sure you can see a pattern based on that pattern this is my question to you please have a look at my question to make such formation how many more how many boxes will you need in 10th case i've shown you three cases now you have to tell me how many boxes or squares will i need to make the 10th case Potima ji the first one 100 Okay, 2500, 2550. Oh my god, 100, 100. Okay, but kafi sahi answer de rahe hai. 121. Okay, I hope these are typing errors, but okay. Now let me change my question. Not a question, I want you to focus on something. How are these tile formations growing? And now I'm going to just show you some samples of what reactions I got. Meanwhile, why don't you tell me how you see this tile formation growing? What sense can you make of this? How are they building from case one to two to three? Some of my participants told me they see them as raindrops falling from the sky. Some of them told me that they see a lava coming out of the mountain. It's how they infer the visual. Some of them saw the <laughs> arrangement of, uh, what do you call those, uh, bowling alley arrangements, how the next block and the next row is built. Now, some of them saw parting C, parting C and then similar towers coming up. Some saw the triangles. This was the most interesting one. This is one person that I can't forget. A teacher said, I see the staircase to heaven and access denied. I have to replay this for you. I hope you are able to see what she saw. Staircase to heaven, access denied. I could not see that. You are in your own zone. You're replying in the chat box, really like it. But what I want you to see here is, some people saw moving or rearrangements, which I'm sure most of what you caught, and that's why some of you could give me an answer right in the beginning. That yes, we can see patterns. We can see in case one, it's a square of side two. In the second case, it's a square of side three, etc., etc., etc. And I am not telling you how to teach. I'm just showing you how I'm trying to hook onto getting you to hook on to what i'm showing you it does not have to be verbal it does not have to be visual all the time it has to be a play of both because both type of stimuli need to be given and we know what will be the answer so answers are most welcome you're most welcome to keep typing i'm not audible Pudamji. i hope not i hope everybody is able to the strategy i'm trying to show you here is something that we use and we claim to use in the classes inquiry based learning now there are five e's of inquiry based learning let me just thoda sa jaldi chalti hu. the first one is to engage where students are engaged in challenging situations you ask them provoking questions and you activate their prior knowledge the next one is explore the student is in going to investigate based on his prior knowledge he is going to make new ideas through your teaching instructions the next one is explain then whatever he is understood through your instructions and his activity he is going to explain and new knowledge is found and then he elaborates he applies his knowledge in new situations the questions you provide or any new activity or you ask them to link ideas together to deepen and extend the learning extended learning karate and then lastly evaluate this is not the evaluation done by the teacher assessment ki baat nahi ho rahi hai. this is evaluation done by the student where he reflects on his knowledge and learning and the extent of learning usne jo aapse seekha hai Uska pura evaluation in reflective mode. What are the advantages of this inquiry-based learning? I'm sorry. 
it is mm, reinforcement of the content it could be a warm up exercise brainstorming session it deepens the understanding of the concept it makes your classes experiential uh, the planned classes if detailed planned in depth it works in almost all subjects and all classes all topics it offer it 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 caters to differentiated learners if i missed out anything please let me know please add on to the list why should i use inquiry based learning in my classroom and if you're using it please share a topic how you did it in the class i would really like unam ji could you please try to re log in because i don't think the issue is on my end meanwhile i'm going to take you to a uh, professor's house this is professor um what do i call him joy chand mathematica he lives on the first floor of a building which has 20 staircases and mrs mathematica has given him instruction ke ji ye ghar pe red and blue paint is there go ahead and paint all the staircases but she gave him specific instructions she said either the staircase is blue or red and also no two consecutive staircases have to be blue can you guess or at least make sense of how mr or professor joy chand mathematica is going to do this is there a maths concept hidden somewhere would you like to solve this for me now this is what i want your help in participate in the next slide please let's consider there are x number of stairs we know there are 20 but abhi ke liye rakhte x number of stairs x represents the number of stairs the number where that stair is placed and px reports the number of ways it could be pasted or painted i'm so sorry so let's paint the first staircase it's right at the bottom of the slide so we are going to paint the first slide um, stair i'm so sorry it is either a blue or a red so how many ways could you do that two ways let's paint the second one i'm sure you understand that no two consecutive stairs have to be blue so this is the only way to do it either you're going with red or you're going with blue or red three ways do you know which concept i'm relating it to if you know and if you're teaching secondary classes you would know exactly where i'm taking this third staircase Uh, i'm sorry it's not probability my question in how many ways can it be done so a uh, third staircase can be done in five ways a pattern is emerging 2 3 5 how about the fourth staircase i'm also giving you the explanation side by side and eight ways 2 3 5 eight have you heard these numbers somewhere before with that could you please go ahead and tell me in how many ways fifth staircase can be painted i look for yes i missed out the name somebody is calling out fibonacci sequence yes so many of you have caught it and you absolutely bang on this can be done in 13 ways and this is the famous fibonacci sequence i hope you like this question this is how i have introduced the concept of fibonacci sequence which is just a tiny question in the first exercise in class 11 chapter i don't remember the first exercise there is one tiny question i said this doesn't do justice let me build a story around it did you like this please let me know aage chalte hain storytelling role playing is one of my favorites cbsc uh, uh, uh dr pramod initiated me into a group of um, capable teachers where we build lot of podcasts CBSC Shiksha Vani app. If you know it, if you have used it, if you experienced it, please tell me, because a lot of teachers are putting a lot of podcasts related to a topic, and uh, yeah. So the next slide is about a podcast. I hope the audio will be playable. I hope the audio is. i know uh is the audio not my audio there's a podcast place is any voice play coming from my side no so i'm going to skip it because this problem came just half an hour back also so 
I'm so sorry, but if you will search for podcast by Gurpreet Patnagar, you will come up with a few that I did for Shiksha Vani. Of late, I am doing a few on some other um, podcast channels. So I'm so sorry that this didn't play out well, but I was anticipating this. So basically, I want to start a class with senior students on a flip board where I don't really teach. I give them a food for thought. I send them these playlists. They listen to it. They try to infer it again. Autonomy of learning, autonomy of learning stays with them. If they're not listening to what I send them on my Google Classroom or whichever platform you share with your students, then the responsibility lies with them. They wouldn't know what's going to happen in the next class. And the next class, we take questions and we collaborate and understand what was that podcast about, what do you make of that? And then based on that, we study further, we solve questions. So the teaching part gets done through a podcast. How sweet is that? Have a look at this. I'm showing you some natural numbers, 1 to 10. I want you to have a look at some color connection going on, some number of cuts going on. Now, 2 has no cuts, 3 doesn't have, 4 has 2 cuts, 5 doesn't have a cut, 6, 7, 8 have cuts, etc. What's really going on? The colors and the number of cuts and the circles, the number. What do you think? Yes. Wonderful, Akarna ma'am. Prime numbers, composite numbers. That's where you're putting it. Apna ma'am is putting it is in the factor class. Prime factorization classes. Sangeeta ma'am is putting it in prime number. Yes. So it's an open-ended slide because I'm trying to invite reactions. I want to see how the child is or the participant is reacting to the information I'm giving. So I provided you information and you react to it. It's a strategy I use in the class. And believe me, this is one of my most favorite uh, slides which I use in class 9th and 10th now that I'm not teaching. So this is one of the things I used to use just to get the child to be curious. It doesn't have to be about a mathematical outcome per se, but just as today we saw numbers, ma'am brought so many numbers. The list is go goes on. And trust me, I gave the same slide without colors and I asked them to color it, put cuts. It was a vacant blank sheet. I'm sorry, I should have shown that, but I gave it as a homework. And it was, you can say it's a time pass activity. What fun is it? What is the learning? What is effort? Sometimes you just need to let maths be fun because, oh, I'm showing the next slide. Superhero triangles. We still have a lot of time, so I hope you're interested. Let me know how I'm doing till now. Would you like to rate my efforts? Am I going doing decently okay as per your expectations? Saurabhji, you want attendance right now? You'll have to really wait. I just wanted myself to be ranked. But if you're asking for attendance link, I'm sorry. I, I think that's a feedback in itself. But moving on, superhero triangles kya hote hain? So let me not give you the definition. As I said, I don't give answers. I let them figure it out. So here is an example. This is a superhero triangle. Whatever you want to make of it. Because we have less time and I have so much to talk about. Look at the perimeter. Look at the area. Can you make some sense of it? So basically a superhero triangle is a triangle having integral lengths where perimeter is equal to area. Now I knew somebody will say Pythagoras theorem. I don't know why we have an instinct to start off with Pythagoras the minute we say right triangle. That's a human nature, I believe. But have a look at another one. This is not a right triangle. Integral sides. Look at the sum of the perimeter. I'm sorry, the perimeter and the area. Here is another one. So the definition of a superhero triangle is a triangle with integral length of sides having same perimeter and area. Here is another one. And this is where I take my kids to. Once I have their attention, a strategy play that I have is to generate a curiosity. And they, there are just five superhero triangles. And I showed a few. Can you find the fifth? And I leave it at that. There is no audio playing. There is no video playing, ma'am. It's just me, me talking to you. So you can have this kind of 
activity done in the class, I'm sure you have great ideas where we can evoke reactions from the kids where you could have an aha moment. Really? You know, this is not in NCRT. So should I talk about it? No, it's up to you. It's just that when I'm doing a chapter of triangles in class 10, this does not make sense. But what about an icebreaker? How about a break in between? How about getting your kids to just, you know, talk to you? But what I brought to you was about a triangle. So what if it's not about similar triangles? So here is another one. I didn't know about the next slide, but I hope someone amongst you knew. A video is playing in front of you. There is no audio, so please don't worry. I didn't know that a river runs a particular length and the distance that it has, they have a relation. I didn't know that. If you knew, please let me know. This was an aha moment for me. And since then, I've been using it to introduce pi as irrational number. But it has nothing to do with irrational numbers or pi per se. But this got my kids interested. I used it as a case study research project. And I said, OK, now you have to do this research and verify whether this relation is true for five rivers in India. Get them to work. That's it. Generate curiosity. So over here, I'm going to skip. This is about scalable number. I think I can just talk about it a little bit. If you're interested, let me know. What is a squareable number? Basically, when a number gets represented with the number of squares in an arrangement so that the arrangement is also a square. I don't know if you made sense of it. Let me give you an example. Number nine can be represented as formation of a square of nine small squares. So the number eight, if you can write it as um, formation in a square form, having eight squares. And somebody might say, ma'am, that's not happening. It does happen. You just need to be very, very open about it. Don't have a fixed mind. Think about it. This is an activity I took in the class. And this is one of the samples, seven. So all you need to take is the size of the squares does not matter. Please don't think of this as square numbers like two square, three square. No, any number. Can you write that, represent that number in the form of a square having that many number of squares? And the size of the squares does not matter. These are just a few samples. So what about the number that's not a square? That's not squareable. Two. Can you really arrange it in two squares, which ends up looking like a square or three and five? So counter examples. Have your children go into counter example, the examples and the non examples. That would be a great thing to do in the class because lessons with examples and non examples build foundation, clear up misconcepts and that way you teach deeper. Any reactions on that? Do you invite, okay, give me an example of, say, um, irrational number, give me a non-example. We do that. Prayers model, we do that in the classroom. You ask a definition, you ask examples, you ask non-example, or maybe a pictorial expression as well. Prayers model, yes. Thank you, in the Indrajit, ma'am. So, aage chalte hain. Yahan par, ye kuch examples mein dikha rahi aapko, in case you think that six cannot be written as a squareable number or eight cannot be. So the arrangement does not have to be uniform or symmetrical. It should be six squares arranged to make a full square. So have a look at the pattern. Where am I going with this? Now this slide should be interesting for you. From one square, I could represent a four. How many square got added? Three. If I divide the fourth square into four parts again, I'm able to make the number seven. How many num uh, squares got added? Three. When the number seven was divided further into four parts, you got three more boxes and you could make a number 10. Where am I going? Can you tell me which topic are you relating it with? Utpal ji, thoda sa wait ki ji attendance link ke liye. Yeah, AP. 
पढ़ाई है ना ये पी बीच में ये फन एक्टिविटी कर लीजिए सॉरी फॉर माय इंस्टिंग टू स्पीक इन हिंदी बट आई होप यू आर लाइकिंग वेर आई एम गोइंग विद दिस नॉट टीचिंग यू हाउ टू टीच जस्ट शोइंग यू हाउ आई टॉट आगे चलते हैं थोड़ा क्या है भाई यहाँ पे ऑटोनमी ऑफ लर्निंग लेटिंग द चाइल्ड लर्न एट हिज ओन अंडरस्टैंडिंग वाइल यूर टीचिंग यू हैव डन दिस इन योर क्लासेस वेन अ चाइल्ड मेक सेंस यूजिंग मेनिपुलेटर्स एंड ही ट्राइज टू अनाउंस दैट आई नो नाउ दैट सम ऑफ टू साइड हैज टू बी ग्रेटर दैन द थर्ड साइड बट बाय द वे येस्टरडे ओनली एक्सीडेंटली आई वेंट ऑन टू वीडियो विच is actually proving that some of two sides can be equal to the third side i wish i could share that with you but time is not on my side right now solo effort of collection but sharing the ideas with you so you take a child into the pit with one idea you have them build more idea solo model of learning the full form of solo model is structure of observed learning outcomes let me repeat this please read about it it's a new model but it's fantastic especially for science and math teacher structure of observed learning outcomes and you put it to use you bring it in your class that's a strategy for you so experiment as much as you can let me give you a goat this goat's length of the rope is 1 meter tied to the center of the wall which is 2 meter wide what is the area it can graze because i just have 2 minutes and still some slides to cover i'm going to rush through it we all know when the length was 1 meter what the child will do but what if the length was 4 meter please mind you on either side of that uh, shed wherever she is tied she can extend outwardly area of semi circle is this what you're thinking did you think about this this is what i am asking you to take your child to raise their bar of expectation that pata hai pi r square h but the area is 10 pi and then i could always let there be an idea of goat tied to a triangle etc etc cra model this is my last talk i hope you still have some patience may i go on for another Three four minutes. C O E Chandigarh. Do I have three four minutes? Can I? May I continue? What about the participants? Maybe they can just tell me. Shall I stop, or would you like to make, take just five more minutes? Beautiful way for the students to see maths. I wish we could put seeing in everything that we teach, but because I'm a visual person, kind of said take whatever you want to put on that. During the concrete stage. the child is interacting using manipulatives jodo gyan kit fraction manipulatives geo board uh, clinometer compass for trigonometry number line tapes graphic equalizers bar models i see using manipulatives and then comes the say stage of representation he makes sense of it by doing pictorial understanding the child is making sense of the concept by making pictures or models using your instructions Uh, Ritu ji, the link has already been shared. If the attendance sheet is what you're looking for, and lastly, the stage is the abstraction out of it. But before that, this is one of the videos I played out for the same set of kids. It's a video with no audio, where a teacher is just showing a working model of what we are anyhow gonna teach using proving a theorem. Length of tangents drawn from an external side are all or external point are always equal, and how simple is that? And then if you go about proving the theorem with them, you will have a highly engaged class. Now moving on, the last stage is abstract part. Let me give you a sample of it. Audio is not there. Please don't worry. I'm showing you a video of. the concreting the idea here we watching the student use manipulatives to concretize the algebraic concept of completing the square method yes i know it's deleted but this was the only example i could get for you this is by you know first you give them a rectangle and they rearrange to make a suitable square it's an important stage of learning you he's using he's he has to be given multiple opportunities and uh, they rearrange to seek a pattern in the process 
After that, they go about making sense of it using Maths Lab activities. If you have not done that, I'm, 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 I'll be surprised, but Maths Lab activities are uh, virtue in every classroom. I had a fortune to work with the initiator, Ma Mrs. Malamani Ma'am, who introduced a uh, Maths Lab idea to CBSC platform. And moving on, this is an abstraction of it where a child puts it to use, he solves questions that you give. So checking the knowledge. That brings me to the end of this session. Uh, still want to take two minutes because I love to recap. A recap of only the take, oh, if you may take from me. Uh, the first one is align with the child's attitude and mindset. Know it before you start teaching. Tap into their curiosity, build it. And after no, that, um, Hello? जी मैं 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 कल्पना नागली आल्सो अबाउट मेकिंग एक्सपीरियंस बट इट्स डेफिनेटली नॉट अबाउट जस्ट हैविंग देम सिट फॉर एन एग्जाम विद दैट आई थैंक यू सो सो वेरी मच दिस इज मी गुरप्रीत भटनागर लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू एनी काइंड ऑफ रिएक्शन और फीडबैक सो दैट मे बी आई कैन डू बेटर नेक्स्ट टाइम डू लेट मी नो इफ यू दर इज एनी टेक फॉर यू you from today's session uh thank you so much thank you if you're not able to fill the form please don't worry just look uh, click on the link one more time and if you have any peers you can probably speak to coe chandigarh about this uh lastly a big big thank you to coe chandigarh for this wonderful opportunity and uh, thank you everyone for being here it was really, really an honor and a privilege to talk to you freely about what i think needs to be changed if if you are already doing it thumbs up to you thank you so much um, for your kind appreciation kuch galti ho gayi to maafi kijiyega but uh, i hope you took more than just my voice quality <laughs> but thank you for the compliment i i, I treasure it i'll remember this thank you so much um So, teaching strategies in maths secondary level. Signing off, good people, Patnagar. Thank you so much, sir. You can take over from here. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's one.